tell us a little bit about the newsletter, the Coyote Bulletin, and how long the city has been doing this. So City Council has came to our department, the Code Enforcement Division, and requested that we come up with an educational uh, brochure or a newsletter or an article uh, to educate the City of, uh, of Rancho Palos Verdes residents about the coyote issues. Um, and we uh, went through um, some of the highlights and bullet points that uh, Council had requested and uh, put together this uh, bulletin uh, that is full of useful information, uh, talks about tonight's wildlife watch program and um, our goals uh, to um, uh, achieve volunteers out of the program for that. Um, it talks about coyote feeding prohibited. A lot of folks tend to feed their dogs or pets outdoors or feral cats and that also attracts wildlife including the coyotes. Um, it talks about our municipal code uh, for feeding wildlife outside and the violation um, fine that goes along with that and, um, and it, there's a pretty harsh penalty for doing that. Uh, the bulletin also talks about uh, coyote reporting and sightings, um, how to report sightings um, using our online feature through the website or uh, the city's um, uh, mobile app or smart app. Um, it talks about the mapping data and kind of highlights and pinpoints where coyote activity is taking place and what that activity entails, whether it's just a sighting or coyotes entered in someone's yard and actually took their pet. Um, it talks about aggressive sighting or coyote sighting strategies and how the city will go about that when we re uh, receive reports on aggressive coyote behavior. It talks about the coyote ecology um, and biology of um, starting from January through December throughout the year, how they evolve in our city. Uh, it talks about safe and eco-friendly deterrence and how we can use um, har uh, less harmful chemicals and, and eco-friendly deterrence such as uh, motion activated detectors or sprinklers um, and other methods to deter uh, wildlife, not just coyotes, but all wildlife and unwanted pets or roaming cats in your yards. Talks about uh, methods of hazing, if you can do that or not. Um, and then some agency contacts. And we also felt it was important to get the whole family involved by including a kid section on the back. So kids are aware like when they're in their yards to make sure that they remove certain things, whether they're eating outside to bring their dishes back in to prevent um, uh, attracting unwanted wildlife so you know, it seems so important too because I think that people don't realize the city is so hands-on with making sure that the residents have this information what do you hear from residents when they call in what kind of concerns do you hear sightings a lot of sightings um, they're really not sure how to interact with a coyote and some are um, just completely terrified of them uh, without really knowing much about them so it's our goal to really educate them and let them know that the coyotes are really more afraid of them than we should be of them um, and what we can do to help deter the coyotes in the area and if you encounter one um, you know just to kind of present yourself as being loud and large to kind of scare them away um, the city also offers an opportunity to come and do a yard check to make sure that you don't have any um, items in your yard that may attract the wildlife um, because if you're frequently seeing these coyotes in the neighborhood, chances are someone may be inadvertently feeding or providing a food, water, or even a shelter resource for them. Attracted to something, obviously. And then how can people get a hold of the bulletin? Well, the bulletin is fairly new. It was just released uh, Thursday or Friday of last week and just made it out into the mailboxes over the weekend and we've already received reports that uh, residents are receiving it. Uh, it was distributed to all residents throughout the city of Ranchos Palos Verdes and we do keep extra copies here at City Hall as well as here in the community center at Hess Park. So the city um, again has requested our department uh, to come up with a coyote newsletter or bulletin um, and Rudy and I had been working extensively for months to edit, re-edit, fine edit, and finally come to um, a, a concession that we had um, completed our coyote uh, bulletin just before this meeting. Our hopes were to try to get this bulletin out a bit sooner, um, but uh, at any rate, it did make it out prior to our meeting and we're grateful for that. Um, and. Uh, 
I'll kind of go over that bulletin now. On the first page or the front page, the Coyote newsletter consists of four pages in totals with various topics all related to coyotes throughout the city of Ranchos Palos Verdes and, and what the city is doing to resolve some of these issues that we receive. The main page, as you see here, discusses tonight's meeting, Wildlife Watch Forum, and uh, Coyote Feeding Prohibited. And as you can see, Coyote Feeding Prohibited is really our, our main front page news because uh, it is a, uh, an attractant um, that keeps the coyotes in our neighborhoods. And um, we want to kind of touch more on that um, and, and what you can do to help us all work together to eradicate the coyotes from your neighbors by removing those attractants. Coyote feeding is prohibited in the city of Ranchos Palos Verdes by LA County section 10.84.010, which prohibits providing food for certain rodents and predatory animals such as coyotes. Coyotes. As mentioned previously, it is a misdemeanor if caught intentionally feeding wildlife, especially coyotes, by an administrative fine at a minimum $1,000. And the city and county can also imprison the offending person in the county jail for up to six months and or by both jail and fine. So please let your neighbors know, uh, do not feed coyotes and, and, and that includes leaving food out to feed your favorite wildlife animals including feral cats. It does attract all wildlife. Talks about page two of the Coyote Bulletin which discusses how to report coyote sightings what happens when reports are received, what the mapping data is exactly, how we use that data, and how the city responds to aggressive coyote sightings. And I'll dive in a little bit about page two. To report coyote sightings, we have really two methods. Um, one is, you know, everyone uses cell phones and, and smartphones, and so we have this wonderful app called the My RV. RPV app. You download that again on Google Play Store or um, the Apple Store um, and uh, you can just plug in the data straight there. It will pinpoint where you're reporting it um, so you don't even have to look around for an address. It's a very efficient tool to use. Another method is um, through our city's website by going to rpv.gov. Uh, search for the Code Enforcement Department tab, and then you'll see the link for Coyote Reporting, as well as other useful information, Coyote News. Um, and of course, the third method, which we don't really emphasize so much, is by calling the um, Code Enforcement Division directly at five, I'm sorry, 310-544-5200. Or nine six and nine nine. I apologize for that. I don't call our direct line so often. Um, but again, the two methods is the My RPV app and um, the online portal. The other topic of discussion on page two is aggressive coyote sightings and strategies. And I know this is a very sensitive subject for a lot of residents, but we do take this matter very seriously. So we always re uh, encourage residents to report coyote sightings to the city via the two options, the My RVP mobile app or the city's website. And again, by calling us directly. Reports are then sent to the Code Enforcement Division, Rudy and I, where we analyze this data to determine if a yard check is required to help identify the attractants and recommend possible deterrence or preventative measures. When a report of an aggressive or habituated coyote is present, the city will escalate the concerns to our LA County Agriculture Weights and Measurement team here, where they will then further determine the analysis to decide if warranted trapping is necessary. And to assist with the trapping efforts, the city has um, initiated a contract with a private a trapper through wildlife pest solutions. Our third page on the Coyote newsletter topics are safe and eco-friendly deterrence, coyote ecology, methods of hazing, and agency contact information. Safe and eco-friendly deterrents help keep out unwanted wildlife, including coyotes. And these deterrents can be something as simple as um, a strobe light or a um, sensory um, a spray uh, that can easily connect to a hose and turn on when anything crosses your yard. Um, and we 
you know, really encourage trying to stick towards more environmentally friendly methods to deter the um, the wildlife. And, and this can even be those pesky cats or dogs that come on your yard and like to do their business. <laughs> so by having um, these deterrents uh, will help uh, really resolve a lot of issues with wildlife. Coyote ecology really talks about the life cycle of coyotes. And I think this is really important to understand because us as a department, we see an influx of coyote activity and reporting during certain periods of the year. And we really wanted to be transparent and share that information with all of you um, tonight. Um, so their mating season generally begins, and we'll start from January through December. It usually begins late January through early March. And the coyotes at that time are searching for dens and males are are becoming a bit more aggressive and territorial during this time because they are going through this mating season and they want to protect their mate and uh, and their potential home or territory. Females will begin birthing their pups between April through late May. So for the next five or six months, pups um, will learn how to fend for themselves um, with their mothers and learn how to hunt. And this time is very typical to see an increase in coyote presence. And this is usually when we really start to get these calls and reports. As fall approaches, coyote sightings will taper off as pups become more independent. Coyotes will stabilize their population by only having as many pups as their territory can support. Now, that's that's very key. It's important to remove the attractants from your neighborhoods, from your own personal property to deter these coyotes from wanting to raise their, their young in your neighborhoods. Without these um, attractants, they're not going to want to raise a family if there's no shelter available or if there's no food or water resources. So again, these three main elements, food, water, and shelter, is really what's going to deter these coyotes to go back into the canyons or back in into hiding out of our neighborhoods and really um, start to encroach more on the wildlife um, resources for food and water and shelter. Um, and it's important um, if your neighbor is inadvertently offering access to these attractants, such as food, water, or shelter, um, they will likely be an increase of coyote activity in that area and they won't leave. Um, and, and I know this takes a long time and we'll always have occasional coyotes here and there but the more we work together as a as a neighborhood and as a wildlife watch program we can really look for these issues and shelters can be simply an old shed that's starting to fall apart or somebody didn't close the door all the way or that door just no longer closes because it's jammed um, anytime there's a crack in in space that allows for an animal to enter or a crawl space or an attic space whatever it may be or a large brush in your yard um, those are all considered shelters. Um, so we just need to be a little bit vigilant about how to secure those shelters or trim up our yards a little bit more to deter um, uh, any wildlife from inhabiting our yards. Methods of hazing is another topic on, on that page. And we understand not everyone has the ability to haze. You know, there can be restrictions such as age or um, a disability or whatever it may be. So if you're able to haze, if you're out and, and you're walking your pet or you're in your home and you're able to grab something that can make a noise like a pot and a spatula or um, you know, anything at all that can make noise. What you want to do if you're out and about walking your pet at night or whatever time of day, apparently, um, you want to make sure you stand tall and never turn your back and run away from a coyote. Coyotes are generally more afraid of people than people are of coyotes and they will likely run away. But if you turn and run from any predatory animal, they will likely want to chase you. Um, so again, never turn and run away, but stand there, stand tall, wave your arms, yell at that coyote like like no tomorrow and and that coyote will be very fearful will turn and run but they will run a few feet away stop and look at you to see if you're serious and I've seen this personally I, I come from a background in animal control where I've chased literally chased coyotes out of Leisure World and other cities throughout um, Long Beach area and Seal Beach and Cerritos and Signal Hill 
And um, they will test you. They will stop and look at you and see, are you serious? And you need to keep doing it because once you continue waving your arms and, and yelling, they will continue to run that distance until they're gone. And that's, that's successful hazing. Um, again, we don't expect everyone to do this if you're not able to, but if you are able to, you, you got to put the fear back in the coyote so they'll leave the area. Um, they'll likely come back if there is access to food, water, and shelter, and they're used to being in that area because they know where that source is. So these hazing methods is, is effective to some degree. Another thing is if you don't have the ability or if you see a, a small pebble on the ground or some um, small branches or twigs, throw it towards the coyote. We def definitely don't want to injure an animal, but if you throw a, just a projectile or a tennis ball towards it, it, it it's not going to try to chase and capture the ball and bring it back to you. Trust me, they will run from you. So just throw whatever towards it you can. If you have like a few pennies in your pocket, just throw it towards the coyote. Um, anything to scare the coyote away is a great uh, way of uh, hazing um, that coyote out of the, out of the neighborhood. Um, and again, it's important to put the fear back into the, to the coyote um, so that, uh, you know, when they see you, they'll instantly want to run from you. Um, other than that, thank you again. Um, this is who you can contact for their agency information. We have the California Department of Fish and Wildlife here. Their contact number is 888-334-2258. That is their 888 number. You can also go to their website at wildlife.ca.gov forward slash keep dash me dash wild or just go to the wildlife.ca.gov website and it's full of great information. Another one is the Agricultural Commission Weights and Measures here, um, and their website is acwm.lacounty.gov, and you'll find lots of wonderful resources on there as well. Their contact number, if you should need it, is 626-575-5471 or 626-575-5471. 5462. And then we have the LA County Animal Control. And again, this is just if you're reporting a dead or an injured coyote or any kind of wildlife or a, a lethargic animal, you can reach them at 310-523-9566 or at animalcare.lacounty.gov.